Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so sorry for the delay. We had a few technical issues, but I'm so glad that you're with us today. I'm Elizabeth George, Director of Member Engagement and Chapter Development with the American Guild of Organists. And I am thrilled that you are going to be joining us for today's webinar, Growing Your Membership. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, you are muted, but we do want to hear from you. So please, please post your questions in the Q&A icon, which is directly below the screen. Um, if we can't get to all of them during the presentation, at least we'll have a record of them there and we can respond to you and follow up later. This is being recorded, so you won't need to take notes. Uh, there's going to be a lot of great information. We'll also have a handout. It will probably be uh, the recording will be uploaded uh, onto our website by Monday with the handouts, and I will email everyone with a link to it. So let me tell you a little bit about our presenter. Aside from being a music lover and a wonderful organist, Shannon Four is Senior Director of Global Accounts and Project Management at GlobalTravel.com where he oversees a membership base of over 65,000 individuals. He has 25 plus years of solid business, marketing and project management in the travel membership and enter enterprise development industries. He's also worked for Turco Holidays, Dynatech, Universal Studios Orlando and the Walt Disney Company. He holds an MBA from Stetson University and a master's from, uh, excuse me, he owes an MBA from Stetson and a bachelor's degree from Rollins College with certifications in project management and human resources management. Shannon is currently working on his PhD in organizational leadership and business strategy from Columbia International University. And on a side note, I have to tell you, he's an avid gardener He's a fabulous landscape designer and a wonderful horticulturalist. And he has helped me so much in growing my roses. So who better to do a Growing Your Membership webinar than Shannon Four? Shannon, it gives me great pleasure to um, give you the floor. <laughs> hey, Elizabeth, thank you so much for, uh, for your leadership and, uh, and that very nice uh, introduction. Um, I think what we will do in order to start this, if, uh, if you're ready, Elizabeth, we have prepared for everyone a very, very lightning fast um, survey uh, to kind of get to the temperature per se of uh, the, uh, you know, the, the social means that we have uh, out there within our current members and our current uh, chapter. So you'll see on the screen pop up, does your chapter have a membership recruiting strategy? And if you would, please go ahead and vote. We have three questions. Okay, well, it looks like there is, I'd say about a third of our audience does have a recruitment strategy, and two thirds do not. Okay. All righty, let's go to the next poll. And that is, here we go. Does your chapter have a Facebook page? I'm gonna launch the polling. Take your time. Ah, good. Okay. I'd say that over half of the audience today definitely does have a Facebook page. A third of them do not. And there's a small percentage that is not sure. And then the last question that we are going to um, do is YouTube. Does your chapter have a YouTube channel? Okay, about two thirds of the audience do have a YouTube channel and a third do not. So there we go. So that kind of sets us up for what you're going to be talking about today, Shannon. Excellent, excellent. So as Elizabeth mentioned, um, I work a lot within the membership industry uh, in terms of uh, actually it's within the travel vertical, but um, there are a lot of similar aspects 
uh, that have to do with finding people that may be interested within the organization or any organization that I work with that can be applied to the American Guild of Organists. And what I have put together is kind of a, a, a small document to talk about a couple different things. Number one, and it kind of goes right to this poll that we just took. I see a lot of no's in terms of, do we have a strategy? Do we have a YouTube page? Do we have social media? And those are things that I will address and talk about during the presentation today. I do also wanna point out that some of the things that I will be talking about um, don't necessarily need a social media strategy or YouTube for those chapters that are out there that may or may not have the uh, resources to do so. But that being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share my screen. And right here, I have a document that I put together. It's called Suggestions for Growing and Strengthening Your Chapter. And as I mentioned, any membership organization is really faced with the following five questions or um, objectives. And that is number one, to acquire new members or potential members uh, and to cultivate members once you get them uh, into some sort of a list. Uh, the next thing that a membership organization will need to do is to convert them into an actual membership. And of course, once you have a member, uh, you need to make sure that you keep them your member. Um, uh, and then finally, in order to grow, you need to refer and hopefully evangelize your cause and, uh, and send that message out there about what a great uh, opportunity and great uh, organization the AGO is. So for the purposes of this call, I'd like to focus really on acquiring um, members, of course, and then also cultivating that potential list of people that either come to events or people that you have solicited on Facebook or uh, YouTube for that matter. And then some ideas about how to convert those members, to, uh, sorry, convert those uh, visitors into uh, members. So the idea here, as I mentioned, is to promote your chapter events and promote your chapter with a promoted for lack of a better term, Facebook marketing efforts, and then drive them either to the Facebook page or to drive them to the chapter website. Once the visitor comes to the Facebook page, the um, high level idea here is to try to uh, get their information, whether it's at a live concert or if it is actually online on Facebook or um, the chapter website in order to capture that information so you can follow them up by email and basically invite them into um, a list of emails, a special list uh, that you would be communicating with that potential member. Um, you know, it's important, and I know that, you know, I will be talking about things that some folks know about, and I know that there'll also be things that people have never heard about before, but I can't emphasize enough, enough that each event is really an opportunity to collect emails, phone numbers, and addresses. You guys have to just try to keep uh, a, a sign-up sheet or uh, just a sign-up sheet with a clipboard and a pen so you can be constantly adding uh, to that mailing list uh, for upcoming events. Um, of course, we do have COVID and we're hopefully getting out of that. Uh, so we, you know, we'll start having those live events more often than not, but it's definitely something uh, worth pointing out that this is something that we need to, to make sure that we continue to do. It's, it's kind of an old fashioned um, uh, grassroots sort of effort. And I, I remember one of the first concerts I went to was a Diane Bish concert. And I know she does it at all of her events she passes out her cards um, for people to fill out. And then it says, yes, I'd like to know about more of the Joy of Music events that are coming up. Um, of course, another thing to do is to 
make sure that you have a Facebook website and also a Facebook marketing plan of some sort um, that focuses on every chapter event, as well as um, anything that's going on within the cha chapter that may be relevant. Um, invite them, of course, to upcoming events. Um, and then, of course, these folks that you invite, uh, you want to make sure that they don't feel isolated as an organist or professional. We welcome anyone who loves the organ and who loves music and the arts. Um, you know, speaking of that, I did go to a, um, a concert recently where there wasn't any mass. It was over in Sanford and they had a full house. There was over, I think about 500 people there. And it was uh, an organ and um, choir festival. And when I say open, it's a good idea always to have that open console policy. I know a lot of times we don't like kids to go up and play with the organ and that sort of thing. Uh, but I do have to tell you that's when the kids are the most excited are right after uh, the concerts. They just go over and they hover around that instrument. And you know, the, though maybe the guest artists might be you know, over in the corner uh, talking to some of the folks, uh, literally here's a great example of one, two, three, four, five. I couldn't even get everybody in the camera shot. There were about 12 different kids running around uh, the organ that just wanted to, to touch it and get close to it and see what was it that made that incredible sound. So just keep that in mind that those kids and those teenagers are the future of our guild and we need to to be open to them with open arms at any at any time or any moment so definitely keep that in mind another thing um another couple of ideas and as i mentioned i wanted to talk about some you know basic grassroots things that folks can do that don't involve social media i will get to that in just a sec but it's also a great idea to make sure that you go out into the community itself. Um, I know that art festivals and craft festivals um, and music festivals are coming up and it's okay to go there um, whether you have the budget uh, or not to go and put up a, um, you know, a stand that might cost a little bit extra. But if you think about it, um, for example, here we have an art festival that's down at Lake Yola. There's literally 100,000 people that will go to that. And uh, the opportunity there is to pass out flyers just about the AGO. Um, you could simply just say, would you like to learn more about one of the local uh, art uh, uh, organizations that we have in the area for music lovers and pass it out to them you could also have a, a booth or a table where you would have a, a sign up sheet for a free CD giveaway. It's just another way for you to collect emails, names, and addresses uh, to put into an email cultivation list. Um, you could also have musicians singing, CDs playing, uh, things like that. So people are interested and, and kind of ask about uh, what you got going on there. Another way that you can grow your chapter. Um, is really about collaboration. It's collaborate, collaborate, collaborate with, with the local organizations as much as possible. Um, we've found a lot of our new um, enrollees and a lot of our younger members are coming from our partnership with the piano chapter, uh, the local piano G guild and also local um, teachers uh, guild. Uh, where they want to, um, you know, take it to the next step and become an organist. The other opportunity that's there is to also invite and collaborate with other instruments other than the organ. And that could be events that include a flautist, uh, uh, events that include a pianist, events that include basically an organ plus event. So organ plus, organ plus, trumpet. Um, the reason why I mention that is we, there are a lot of chapters that are out there that only focus on just organ um, concerts. There's nothing wrong with that, but do keep in mind the more additional instruments that you add, 
you add to the number of people and interests in different kinds of music. Uh, so that will just broaden your audience. It also gives you another opportunity to partner again with another organist. So if you're partnering with the Young Teachers organization that specializes in piano, you can invite that entire organ uh, that entire uh, organization to come to your events. Another um, thing that we have that I didn't really even think about until I started dabbling into it, and I know that we might be changing it. Well, I'm not gonna say on card, but with whatever kind of membership um, management system that we have, there they are actual resources. Um, so for example, you can actually go into the system and look for your canceled members. Um, you know, it's not that the fact that they're always canceled, it could be that their membership has lapsed or, you know, maybe they ended up on an old mailing list or something like that. It turned out that when I went into my on-card system, when I was Dean, I was Dean for, for two, two times, um, I found over 173 members that had been kind of just placed in there for one reason or another. I want to say that I was able to get about 10% of those folks um, uh, back into the organization. Um, and again, I realize I'm going over a lot of different things. Um, if you do have questions, you're welcome to, to, uh, to throw them out at me. Um, it's kind of like uh, taking a drink from a fire hose, as I say, but I do also want to let you know that you will have copies of this. Um, after the in. We do have a question. Yeah. Um, we have a comment and a question. So I'm going to I'm going to stop for a second so that you can uh, answer Mary Johnson. In recruiting, there's a fine line between welcoming all to the organization's events, newsletters, etc, and keeping the members as exclusive in quotes. Yes. What do you advise to do both to do both effectively? Yeah, that's a very good question. And that actually comes down to how we um, handle those, um, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, leads, or let's just say visitors or potential members. My suggestion to you, so you're not bugging people that are already members, is to put them into two separate groups. So if you have, the one group that you currently have, which is your current members, that would be a completely separate list. Um, the secondary list would be potential members. And you can create those either inside of a, of a group inside of Hotmail or Gmail, you're able to create a group um, email to, those, to, the, to that sort of a group. If you don't have uh, an email platform, like let's say Constant Contact, or MailChimp or something like that. And then what I would do is I would have a separate, what is called in marketing um, drip. It's known as a drip campaign. All that basically means is let's say three or four different emails that would be sent out at different times uh, in order to try to engage that potential member and then let them know about the AGO in general and invite them to come to some of the upcoming events. And then also to invite them to become a potential member or actually to become a member, I should say. So, you know, what's interesting about this, it's like I said, I use, this is how we get new business within our organization where I work at Global Travel. This is also how we get new um, members to come to our church. Um, we don't send the same emails to our members that we do to our visitors. So you can use this same idea within your churches. We all kind of want the same thing. We're trying to evangelize, you know, whether it's our, to our musical cause or to our religious cause. So the idea is, is to have something along the lines of, um, it was so great to, to, to meet you. We're glad that you may be interested with in the organ, uh, sorry, within the American Guild of Organists. Um, here's a list of some of the upcoming events that we have coming to you. We would love for you to join us. 
uh, socialize with us and learn more about the organization and also uh, learn more about this great instrument that we call the King of Instruments. Um, let me just see here. I want to get down into, if you look at the constant contact and communication, this does have a little bit more to do with communication to um, cur current members. But what I want to speak to is what do we do with some of those uh, potential uh, new members that are coming up? Like the question that we just had is, you know, what do we do with those with that list and how do we make sure that they're separate? I think it's important to point out that there are a couple of fundamental things that we do need to, to kind of have in place uh, up front. And I do suggest, and it, it sounded like that there were more no's than, um, than not that had um, uh, YouTube and also Facebook uh, spaces for their local chapters. So a couple of things. It's always good in this day and age, of course, to have your own Facebook page. So you have your calendar of events and also to have you know, the listing and, and have yourself publicized on, uh, on that platform. There's so many reasons to be on Facebook. I could sit here for another two hours and tell you why, but really what it is, it's about that potential audience that's out there for new members and basically to share all of this information with there's I can't remember how many there are I did a study on it I think there's about 15 or 20 billion people that are on it if I'm not mistaken uh, around the globe that's not in, in the United States of America and what you can do is you can create campaigns inside of Facebook in order to reach out to potential um, members that are very similar in behavior and also interest to um, the American Guild of Organists. Now, I know that there'll be a lot of questions about why and how do we do all of this. I'm definitely going to walk you through it. And it's a lot easier and it's a lot more user-friendly than I think folks um, may think initially. Um, so I think that would, probably be a good kind of foray into how is it that we would maybe create a program inside of Facebook. Um, and if you don't have a Facebook page, I'll sh also show you how to create a, a Facebook page too, um, in order to have a platform to promote your own chapter. So in that mindset, what I'm going to do, uh oh, I can't see my whole screen here is go over to my Facebook page. And this is the local chapter of the American Guild of Organ Organists in the Central Florida chapter. Now, if somebody is looking to create a page, the first thing that you would need to do- Shannon, we've, we've still got your hand up out on this, your, your hand out up on the screen. So you might need to stop sharing that and then switch over to the other. Oh, on my handout? Okay. Yeah. Maybe stop sharing for a second and then share the other. Hmm, let's see. Hold on a sec. Here. New share. Here we go. How's that? Perfect. Okay. So what you would need to do is basically sign into, an, uh, into Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook account, you would uh, basically create a new account. And it's simply going to the Facebook homepage and clicking the button that says create new account. Um, to create a new page, all you have to do, let me get out of this thing here. All you have to do is go over here to page. And what you would do is you would actually, actually, I'm sorry, it's, it's over here. They keep moving everything. Hold on just a second, guys. I'll just add that I, who am not the most uh, savvy technologically, 
was able to create a, a page for a private group uh, with the AGO. And if I can do it, you can do it. I'm Thank convinced. <laughs> yeah, what, what would happen is you would end up on your home page here and you would go down into your shortcuts. It's like I said, they keep changing everything. That's pages. You would click pages. And then over here, you simply cl click uh, create new page. And it's very simple. So we come up with the page. So whatever um, uh, AGO chapter X, and then we go into category, uh, we can say music, band, whatever, um, or religious, if you're setting something up for your church, religious organization. And then the description, we would put an appropriate description in there and it populates down here. And then- so is this how they could promote a new event then? Actually, this is for folks that um, don't have a YouTube page. Got it. Sorry, sorry, my God, sorry. That don't have a Facebook page. And this is actually how they would create a new Facebook page. Okay. If, if you don't have a Facebook page, um, then you won't be able to create a, um, a way to reach out to other folks. So what you would do is you just continue to follow the prompts and fill out the information. And when you fill all of this information out, when it's done correctly, instead of me just doing stuff, it'll say create page. And then from there, you can upload images into this area here. And then you can continue on to do the next step, what I'm gonna show you to do. So let's say that we have the page like we do here. And what we wanna do is we want to try to reach out to, um, I think what we wanna do here is try to reach out rather than creating an event is to try to reach out to potential people that may be interested in the American Guild of Organists within your area um, and kind of lead, uh, create a lead funnel, which is a, a way to basically reach out to potential people that may be interested in the organization. So the way that this works is you click very simply on, on your own page, is you click create new ad, and then there's all these different goals here. So we want to think about, okay, what is, what is it that we're looking for? And I'm going to open this up a little bit. So within Facebook, you have the ability with this goal section in terms of the create ad section to either get more likes, which is more people coming to your page and clicking this little like button. Um, and that basically just kind of creates more buzz. Uh, the next thing is, to create more leads. And that is basically putting together a form to collect contact information for potential customers. Now it says customers here, but that's not what we're looking for. However, don't worry about the fact that it says customers. What we're looking for is trying to reach other people that may be interested in our page and our organization. There's a couple of other things that are on here. Um, there's the get more visitors, to your website. Um, that's another thing that can be done in order to get them to go to your chapter website. So I think, you know, one of, you know, looking at all these different options that are available here, um, the ones that I would focus on for our purposes are ways to get more people to, or, or actually, sorry, to get more people to collect contact information from for potential members, and then also get more visitors to your website. And, that, and I would mean the, the local chapter website. So what you would do here is you would click get more leads. And so what it's doing is it's creating uh, the, the template that's required in order to go down this route. And what I wanna talk about now is basically what just happened, what the system just did. The system is creating an ad for us to be able to get 
and collect more information from people that see the Facebook page for, in this example, the uh, American Guild of Organists Central Florida chapter. If you just go down and just read the information, it's, it's very user, user friendly. You just kind of just need to look and make sure that you've checked the boxes. You have the information filled out. You set your budget and then um, you click create form. Uh, it's kind of a quick general overview, but let's go through each of these things really quickly. Add creative, how do you want this to look? So we go down here and we have the description. So right now it kind of defaults and it just takes the name of the um, page and it throws it in here. What we can do is we can go over here and we can say, how would, you, so that would be the headline. And what it's doing is it's, is it's, um, it's populating up here. So when you see this little square over here, this ad preview, this is actually what the people will see. So if you notice over here, if I change the description, it'll update over here. So, so the idea here is to try to come up with something that's exciting, you know, learn more about Let's say, learn more about great music in the area from the Central Florida chapter of the American Guild of Organists. And it'll pop up, there we go. And then let's go down a little bit. What it's done right here is it's already selected the homepage image. And this is a picture that was taken at one of our events. Um, if you wanted to change that, you would simply select media and you can um, upload a video or you can also upload several images and it will kind of rotate as a carousel, but let's just keep it sim uh, simple here. And then it's asking us for a headline. Um, and what we can put here is, um, really whatever you want to do in terms of attracting people with kind of a, uh, an exciting message of, um, let's say, um, And let's see, if you look down here, this is where it populates down over here, learn more about, cla about classic music. So we have to keep it within 25 characters. Um, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do down here is when you're seeing this sort of ad preview that's in that area, uh, is you're going to have down here the button that they're either going, that we would need to make appropriate for basically learning more about this kind of campaign. And this down here, the button label is where you can choose to uh, decide which one is the best to use. What I would say that you would choose is definitely the learn more button. And again, it populates over here to learn more. And let's see, contact form, form created. And the next thing that I'll, oh, okay. Here's something else that's really cool. Is I, I have a couple of questions. I'm gonna, uh, while you're looking for some other things to share. One is uh, whose email do you use to set up the page? Um, if you want to you if, if somebody wants, if it's for the chapter, it can be, I, I suggest you go into Gmail and or Hotmail and create an account that's specifically for that chapter. So if it's a Gmail account, what I would say for this example here is to create a new Gmail account or Hotmail account for the CF AGO um, chapter at gmail.com. 
And another question from Susan Legrand, and I know Susan from the Central Hudson chapter, I believe, Hudson Valley chapter. Our chapter has a website and attempted Facebook marketing a few years ago, but have neglected this effort because of reluctance to spend money on it. What would you suggest as a reason? This is a good question. What would you suggest as a reasonable budget for promoting or boosting using Facebook? Note our chapter has 60 to 65 members. Okay, 65 members. And, and can you tell me again, uh, which chapter was it? This is Central Hudson Valley chapter. Okay, Central Hudson Valley. Okay, that's a very good question. Um, if you want to, you can basically start small and that's definitely where I would start with any of these campaigns. And what I would do is if you look here, it automatically defaults to the smallest amount of money that, that's gonna be spent. The cool thing about this is the smallest amount of money to be spent for this campaign that it defaults at is $5 a day for seven days. And uh, that comes out to about 35 bucks. What it does for you as well is it estimates the daily results of the people that it will reach. And when I say by it, it's by Facebook's algorithm. It could potentially reach anywhere between 300 and 900 people. The number of leads, in other words, number of people who may fill out your form to submit more information for, uh, to you for, uh, for more information about the Guild is anywhere between one and 10 people. Um, if I go down, let's see, where is it? If I go down here, this thing here is a little bit longer uh, that gets into the actual spend where you can change the spend. The neat thing about this is that you can make the changes to the actual spend and you'll see the exponential reach and change for the estimated daily results as you go up. So as you see here, if you spend incrementally more and you double your budget where you spend $70, you would um, potentially reach 500 to 1500 people and gain this many more people. This is on a daily basis, by the way, of people that may be interested in your organization. I do wanna say, and um, if we have time, I'll go in and I'll show you. It's, uh, well, and to answer the, uh, the question for the person from Hudson Valley, it works exactly the same way for boosting and promoting your posts um, that you currently have or your events. So whenever you create an event, you have this same opportunity to do it. Although of course, it's not going to be for the purposes of um, uh, trying to gain people that are interested in becoming members. It would be the reach of people that people's actual eyeballs get uh, for the, the boosted post for an upcoming event. At any rate, if you know, to give you, I don't mean to diverge from a, a, a lead capture form, information capture form, but I suggest that for you guys to just try it is to do a seven day running ad up to one of your events and then have the links to the location of the event. And if you're doing it uh, as an online event, um, uh, to make sure that you have that information in there. But that's an excellent, excellent question. If we continue down here a little bit more, as I mentioned, you just wanna make sure you go through all of these little bits of the form to have, make sure you have everything filled out. Um, special ad category, uh, this has to do with employment, housing, social issues. You don't have to worry about that. This part here uh, has to do with the audience. Who should see your ad? What's really neat about this section here, and I know that there'll be folks that are a little bit intimidated about doing this in general, is you have these buttons here where it says people who like your page, people who like your page and their friends, and then there's um, audience one, uh, and then there's also audience details. So there's a couple things you can do here. Number one is you can create your own new audience. And that's basically what I did. And when you click create new, that's when you can go in 
and you can actually tell the system or tell Facebook who you want this ad to see and actually what their demographic would be. Um, I already did it uh, for sake of time, but let's say in here, I've already gone through, I've created an audience. Let me see if I can do it this way so I don't have to start all over. The way that I set it up was I selected the location, the age, the gender, gender and the interests of the people that I wanna reach in my ad. Um, so what I did is I put people within 25 miles of the United States, actually, I think somebody went in here and changed it. So I wanna do Orlando, Central Florida. I select that. So people within 25 miles of Orlando, detailed targeting. I click detailed targeting. And this is really cool. If you go through each of these tabs, you'll see all of these different demographics um, that you can select. And let's see here, what I did, entertainment, shopping, technology, hobbies, activities, arts and music, dancing, painting, sculpture, singing, Gosh, I can't remember where the music one is. I know I selected it. Entertainment, live events, music, classical music, gospel, so on and so forth. And what I'm doing is I'm creating an audience that I want to specifically target people to. Let me make sure that I've done that. So I've selected. And then what I do, if you notice here, I've added those interests. Facebook automatically goes in there and looks to see how many people you know, match that demographic that I've picked. If you notice, that's just within 25 mile, a 25 mile radius of Orlando. So what I can do, I've defined my audience. Again, there's tons of different ways you can do this. You can do it by education, by various interests, by their behaviors. By behavior, that means you could do it within their birthday. That would be something like a promotion, like we're giving away a birthday CD or whatever, or it's your birthday, um, go on a travel trip. That's what we do in our, at work. Um, let's see here, what else? We don't wanna get into politics. No. <laughs> Four categories, what else do we have here? So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And what I'll do is I click save audience. And again, that will go ahead and that'll repopulate and do your estimated results. Now, when I say this may be intimidating, if, if you folks out there have already an existing chapter um, Facebook page, all you need to do is click people who like your page and their friends, because what's gonna happen is the system is actually going to take all the folks that are members of, of your uh, page already that have gone in and liked it, and it will create what's called a lookalike audience for you. And if you look and see, it's applied that, and it's it's not so bad. I mean, it's 483. It's about the same as the one that I created with my own audience, which is a pretty good match. So what will it will do is Facebook will actually go out there and it will look for people. We'll, we'll make this very crystal clear. It'll go out there and it'll look for people that are just like AGO members. Okay. Shannon, you, question. Yeah. And I think I know the answer to this, but I'm gonna let you answer it. Should the Facebook page be public or private? Public. Absolutely. Yeah, it can be public. Now, if you want to create within your chapter Facebook page, a members group, all you have to do is go in and click create group button. And you would need to start inviting people from your membership into that private group. But if you want to do this, so you're having a, a larger reach, you definitely want to have a public page. And you know, in all, I, I think in all reality, I don't think there'd be a reason why you wouldn't want people to know about your local chapter events. As I said, every single event, no matter what it is, is an opportunity to reach out to more people. Um, getting back into finishing this exercise up, 
we've gone in and we've go we've uh, put in a daily budget. We have created the audience. We've put in our ad categories. Uh, we've put in our contact information. We then click create form. And so what it does is it generates what the form will actually look like. And here we can also do a little bit more customization. And if there are folks that are out there that are concerned about um, you know, any of the privacy laws that are out there or any sort of privacy things that are, that are out there about collecting people's information, you have the opportunity to go ahead and do that. Um, Facebook makes it um, optional for you. Um, but um, it is a good idea to go ahead and put something in there. And I think, and James will have to um, let us know at a later time, I think it's okay if we just go ahead and we can use the privacy policy that's located on the AGO headquarters website and then just paste it in there. Mm -hmm. That way we're covered. Um, and basically what that privacy policy says is that um, you're giving your permission and I mean the person that's filling this little form out, um, the ability or the uh, okay for you to reach out to them with information about the AGO. And you know what you wanna do here is of course, um, make it pertinent. So basically what it says here is contact information, confirm the details, um, custom form optional. I guess you could put more information in there to say why you're doing this. So learn more about the, and I'm just gonna abbreviate for sake of time, CFAGO chapter events. Mm -hmm. You could put you could put in there music or uh, organ events or upcoming things that are coming up. Um, we, So you see right here that it populated what I put down there. And now customer info, what information would we like to ask for? Um, full name, it's already defaulted because you're gonna need somebody's name. And then it asks you if you would like to check any of these other boxes. My suggestion to you guys is people are typically scared away by asking them for their phone numbers. So, I would just leave, leave it as their first name, first and last name, and then their email. Then you check that box and you leave it. If we wanna look and see if there's anything else left in here that we need to do, we just click this button over. So there's the contact information. So enter your name, and then they would enter in their email. And then here's the privacy. This is actually the privacy policy that's defaulted by Facebook. Um, I'm pretty sure that it covers everything. Um, so I guess taking that back, I don't think you guys would need to put anything additional in here. Because when you're a, a, when you sign on to Facebook, when you become a Facebook member, you do agree to their privacy policy uh, rules. And basically this means that you're not going to abuse the system. Thank you, you're all set. Um, the one suggestion that I do wanna put here, and just to kind of walk you through this really quick, what I just showed you is the actual quote unquote visitor information form that the uh, potential member or visitor uh, would see if they clicked on that learn more button that we selected earlier. Um, there is a option here for you to add uh, a view website button. And I would definitely, oh, where is it located here? Add privacy policy, short question. There's a place here that we would add, you know, your local chapters um, URL. And that's definitely where you would push, put that. You click save. And basically the system now is ready to run the ad. And just to kind of review um, this, 
is what you would see when you pr start promoting this ad. Now, just to see it, how everybody else would see it on Facebook, we can click see all previews. And it's going to show us what it will look like in the experience from a user that's on a desktop or if it's on uh, mobile, if they're looking at their mobile app. So if we look at this and we had pressed this uh, promote now, it would actually start the campaign. What would happen, as I mentioned, is this will show up in people's news feed as they're going through um, and just kind of surfing throughout Facebook. They'll see this ad and they would simply click that learn more button. This is the experience that they would see on their mobile phone. They would click learn more and then they would fill out that little form that we just um, uh, created. And then it would actually capture their information. And that's what would happen if we would click the Promote Now button. Now, the question then becomes, once we promote this and we start getting people that are putting their information inside of the, the system, um, it will actually save the information for you. Uh, and then what you have to do at that point very simply is, and don't worry, I have a, uh, I have a handout for you guys, so you don't have to worry about writing all this stuff down. Um, I have a step by step, step one through, I think there's eight steps here to go through all this stuff. And of course, if anybody has questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly. Um, but what you would do in order to download those folks that have filled out the form is you go over to the, um, go to the publisher's tools, which is just under the manage page section, under the business suite. You click publish tools, and then you go down to the draft forms library. And right over here, there's a little button that says download. When you download those, um, leads, they'll end up in an Excel spreadsheet. This is, this is kind of for work, but this is the same way that we, we did it. And then you would just take that email list, you would copy it, and you could go over to one of your um, email platforms, whichever email platform that you're using, and create a special group. If you don't want to go through and create a special group, you can literally just go in and drop that message in to all those people. And it's taking a little bit. This is my work email. Uh, it's actually loading all of those emails into that system. Hopefully it didn't freeze up on me. And then what you would do periodically is go in and um, update that list. Hopefully you will have received some people that are interested, interested in learning more about your chapter events. So that's, that's that, and it looks like we're already coming up on an hour. Um, well, we started a little late, so if you want yeah. to continue a little more, I don't know if you wanted to go over to YouTube or not, well, but I have a question. So, yeah. Ben, and it's, it, it would make sense to me that the chapter really has to dedicate, s s ask someone who's committed to checking this, this page every day, right, to see what responses you've got. Would that, would, would that be the procedure that you would use to get the most out of it? I wouldn't, um, oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, so what it did is it loaded all those emails. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that you have to assign somebody that would get in there. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get back over to Facebook to look at it every single day, because what the system will do is even if I went in here and I set this thing for 30 days. Um, the system is gonna go ahead and it's gonna save it. It's going to hold it into that repository uh, that's inside of um, Facebook. So it's not something that you have to go in there and, and upload every day or hold on to. What it will do actually is it will keep a running list of the leads that mm -hmm. pop in there. Um, 
And that's how that works. And you know, I know that this can be a little bit intimidating. Um, I know that it's a, it's a different interface than some people are used to, but I do have to say it's one of those things, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to mess up. I know you're probably like, yeah, right. But um, if you go in here, it's very intuitive. If you think about it, um, if we go back, you go to your homepage, you create a new ad. I want to get more people to learn about my organization. That's basically get more leads. And then uh, you fill out the appropriate information and then you click promote now. Um, what I did is I did go over and as I mentioned before, I, I created a, um, Hold on just a second. Guys. So basically what you would do, as I mentioned, is you just follow these, I think there's eight different steps. <laughs> and it's, it's very intuitive, as I mentioned. Um, and let me know if you guys have any questions uh, about creating an ad for collecting visitor emails for information. Um, kind of in that same vein, I know that we had a question that was about, well, what do we do with this information? I just wanted to touch on that quickly. And that is, of course, after we get that information, what do we do with that information? Um, I think the idea here is to create an autom uh, is to come up with some sort of a drip campaign. As I mentioned before, if your chapter doesn't have MailChimp or um, I forgot about constant co contact or there's another one called um, get response. There's also active campaign. If you don't wanna to get too much into that automation, and I know, I know that would be more for the larger um, chapters, you can just simply come up with three emails that you're going to send once a week after you've uh, received those emails. Um, and basically the idea is is you would put in there your chapter events that you've promoted, let's say within your Facebook marketing efforts. Um, you can invite them to the chapter website and also to the uh, headquarters website. You can also educate them about your chapter and the guild and the membership benefits um, and encourage them to be participative in the upcoming events and encourage them to become members. Obviously the goal here is to try to get them to become members of your chapter. Um, here is also an example of a sample marketing cadence. And what I mean by that is this is a pattern for you to communicate about upcoming events for current members. And I'll, I'll update this for current members. And this is just kind of an idea of what you guys can do in order to put together a, a, a marketing campaign for, for upcoming events for your current members. And you know, I think it is important to bring up the fact that there were a lot of folks that in their chapters that didn't have a new member recruitment strategy. It's, it's okay to say it. If it's not written down, it didn't happen or it won't happen. And you know, it's okay to put together goals for our recruitment and it's okay to put together um, a, a plan and a plan and a strategy. And, you know, of course the idea, as I mentioned earlier was to get out there and start trying to get that information from your visitors. Um, you don't even have to go out into the public area. You can do it within your own church. You can do it within your partner organizations and you can do it within Facebook. Um, Another means to get the message out there is also YouTube. Um, 
And Elizabeth, did, do we have time to do that? Well, or I'm wondering if we ought to do like a, a part two that just focuses on YouTube. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. I think we should do that. I mean, this is this has been a lot of information, I know, for all of us to kind of <laughs> take in. But the handout is going to be great. The video is going to be great. You can stop it. You can start it. You can play it again from the beginning. But I think I think at this point, this is probably enough for us to digest. But I do think we want to do a follow up webinar. Uh, about using YouTube because that's the next that would that would be complementing what you're doing with this and, and be the next step. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it would so, probably also be a good idea um, because we talked about trying to get new members. It would probably be a good idea to have how to create an event and how to promote an event mm -hmm. on Facebook. Uh, and we could maybe have that be a component for the YouTube because it's it's very similar. The, the idea is similar. Excellent. Excellent. We, we did have one comment and I just want to say thank you so very, very, very much is that stating the obvious this year's Young Organists offer is a perfect transition from Absolutely. potential to actual members. And um, yeah, I, if if I can. Uh, I highlighted that part right here. Oh, okay, and I've got somebody saying, please schedule YouTube webinars soon. We're creating a fair amount of content during the pandemic. <laughs> oh, fantastic, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think the whole idea kind of leads into that. You know, how do we get more members? How do we reach out to that younger generation? And, you know, it's about talking up the AGO and then how do we get that message out? You know, it's not just about, you know, a little, uh, organ concerts and doing some pedagogy. There's a lot of really great things that we do out there. And, you know, taking that message, and I've, I've kind of given some ideas here about how we can, you know, describe what we do and also describe what we have coming up for our young organist program for the Year of the Organist, what, uh, what uh, Elizabeth spoke about, and also hopefully some things here that you guys will be promoting um, is all of these great aspects of the AGO that we can talk up. Uh, the fact that we're giving away a free membership to anyone under the age of 30 is incredible. Believe me, when I went to that uh, event and I saw all those kids, those 12 kids that came to that organ concert um, over in Sanford at St. Stephen's, you can believe me that I am all over that organist in that church to give them this information and invite them to be part of this organization. Because if you like me, when I was a young man or a, a teenager or even, you know, an eight year old, a nine year old, there aren't a lot of people that have that like interest. Um, and it's really cool to find an organization where you have that camaraderie, where you can socialize with those, with those folks. In fact, that church, you could tell that those kids had already created kind of their own little group, of, you know, for the organ, which is great. This is just another way that they can learn more about the organ and also grow your own chapter. So uh, th this is just fantastic. I'm so excited about it. Um, well, I'll share if I may, and it's probably gone up since uh, since I looked this morning, but we, and this is not counting people that have been reinstated or renewed, we have uh, within the last, July is not even over. Well, it is, <laughs> I guess, but we've, we've recruited, uh, I think 158 members. These are new young organists. So that's, that's incredible. Uh, it is good, it is. And here's the other thing that we are doing. We've gone back and looked at young organists who canceled their membership going back to 2018. Now we have to qualify to the fact that they're still under 30, but we've sent them a, a wonderful email that says, this is not your grandfather's AGO. Come back, be a part of this year. This year is all about you. Um, and I'll just, I'll share, we, we were dumbfounded, but this is the truth. Someone signed up who is actually four years old. He, he must be a student of someone's. And we decided that this young person might need some specific uh, education, but that, uh, 
learning about uh, retirement plans might not be exactly in his wheelhouse at this moment, but we got so tickled when we saw that somebody who was four years old, it was obvious his parents that had signed him up. Yeah. But yeah. in any event, it's very, very exciting. And um, Shannon, I can't thank you enough. I, as, as it was commented, we need to follow up soon. So we'll check your schedule and we'll make sure that we can do a part two. I think creating the event, as you said, is, is important to share. Mm -hmm and then going over to YouTube to show that. Right. Because um, we're, we're in those times now where we, we're opening up. We hope we continue to open up. We hope that this, this Delta variant is not going to stop us from being able to have face-to-face -face programs. But again, being able to use social media is incredible. And I, I will, and Shannon knows this, and the AGO, it, 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 it is at the top of one of our strategies as we create our new three-year strategic plan. We cannot have a strategic plan without including the opportunity for recruitment through social media. Yeah. So- um, And something to throw out there too, Elizabeth, for those folks that may, you know, th that saw that this was a little bit um, confusing or maybe difficult, um, once you go through it once or twice and you can't, you can't mess up, um, just keep that in mind. You can always back out of it, but, um, setting up that one campaign that we did today is probably about as difficult as it gets doing the event and promoting the event is, is even easier. Um, YouTube is, is, is fairly easy. So we did, uh, I showed you the hard part today. So. It's, uh, if anything, it's really exciting to know that we have the ability now to reach more people to become part of our organization. That's what I'm so excited about. Well, I've got a great comment here. Great stuff, Shannon. This is the kind of useful info lots of chapters need. Amen. I agree with you, Ed Ackerman. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Um, so before we leave, I'd be remiss if I didn't, and we will schedule a follow-up webinar where you just have to look at Shannon's schedule, but we do have two more officer training webinars coming up. The next one is on Monday, August 9th. Molly Davey, who's our membership coordinator, is going to go through everything you ever wanted to know about OnCard. So this is for registrars, this is for treasurers, anybody that has access that's pulling lists uh, from on card tracking um, remit reports of whether you're getting um, a portion of the membership for a new a member that's joining. This is a great way to track your new young organists that are joining. And as well as Shannon said, um, you've got those people that's what we would call low hanging fruit that may no longer be members, but are still on a list that you can reach out to. So there's going to be a lot that Molly is going to go over in using on card. And then on March 16th, this is going to be kind of fun. This is going to be a webinar really for sub deans or others in your chapter that are involved in programming. We're going to have a panel discussion. We're going to have representation from small, medium, and large chapters. And it's going to be a discussion about what they're planning for the year. And we really want our registrants, the people that are our audience, to be very interactive and share what they're doing as well. But we thought this would be a great way to kick off. What, what are we thinking of? What are we going to do that's going to be different and new? And just the idea, the idea sharing, which we hear from you all the time, is the best part of chapter leadership, is, is what we hope to do with this webinar. So I just want to end by saying, Shannon, thank you again for this incredible amount of information. Um, it is, uh, as I said, we'll have it up on our website uh, by Monday and the handouts will be there. And then we will go ahead and schedule as soon as possible based on Shannon's schedule, a follow-up uh, webinar so that we can really take another deeper dive into this. So I wanna thank everybody for coming today. Shannon, thank you again. Everybody stay well. And- thank everybody uh, for attending, I appreciate yeah. it. I know it's, a, it's, a, it's late in the, in the Friday afternoon and I know your time's valuable, but uh, it also shows your dedication to this incredible, incredible organization. And thank you so much. And, and I appreciate it too, Elizabeth. Uh, when we appreciate you, Shannon. All right, on that note, well, thank you, everyone. 
Uh, take care, have a safe weekend. I've learned uh, on my first month working at the AGO, not to say have, an, have, an, have a great weekend because you all or most of you are working on the weekend. So I've stopped saying having a relaxing weekend, but I'll say uh, uh, have a, a good and productive um, weekend and stay well. And uh, yes, we will get the document that Shannon shared, Jane Ott. We will. It'll be up there as a handout. Not to worry. It will be there along with the recording. So everybody stay well, take care, and we will see you again soon.